What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it with some brand new AEW action figure news for you guys. Jeremy, you guys know how Jeremy works, right? He goes to the Twitter sphere and he tweets out, who wants to see AEW figure drops knowing damn well, Brad? We want to see those AEW figure drops. And today, he delivered, man. He delivered in a big way. I did not expect to get this. I feel like every time he takes to Twitter to show us stuff and then he teases the reveals, I feel like the reveals aren't ever big. But I feel like today delivered, man, so I'm pretty excited for it. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Starting out first, man, we have Unmatched Series number 3, AEW Unmatched Collection Series number 3. You guys know this wave is pretty much fully about Dark Order and that whole faction. So let's go ahead and dive in, man. Starting out first with Evil Uno. Holy-ish, man. This figure looks incredible. Love the way this figure looks. I like the build that we got going on. I feel like he may be a little bit slimmer than he actually is here in the figure. But overall, I like what we got going on with the parts, choices, and the overthrow and stuff. I hope that the vest doesn't like interfere with articulation too much. It does look like it has kind of that like overthrow, similar to the overalls and the shirt mold that we got on our Sting from Unmatched Series 2. It seems to me that like his overthrow shirt right there kind of looks similar to that, right? Like it goes over the crotch piece a little bit and it'll have like an indention on the crotch piece. We'll have to see about that once it releases, but it reminds me of Ortiz and Sting from Unmatched Collection Series number 2. But you guys can see these one-of-one -one molds, right? We got some boots on here. The lower legs have like the sock mold pulled up and the white socks. You got the big black knee pads on there. Left knee pad looks like it's bigger than the right for some reason. I'm sure. I don't know if that's accurate or not, or maybe it's just the way the picture is, but he's got some sculpt going on on the pants. The black and purple and silver and white all look great. The mask looks really good. Can't wait to see what it looks like up close and feel it. Looks like it's a heftier figure. It looks like it's going to, you know, feel good in the hand and all the great things that we love about these figures, but Evil Uno starts it off right. I think, uh, you know, it looks good and everything. I feel like the eyes, I don't know, the eyes kind of look standard to me. You know, I don't know if it's the most likeness as far as the eyes go, but the mask looks good, which is probably the most important part of the entire attire, but you guys can let me know what you think about that. I don't know. That's just my first thoughts on Evil Uno, but next up in the set, man, we also have a look at Stu Grayson. Stu Grayson from AEW and Match Series number three. Really love the way this figure looks. I think it has a great head sculpt. I think that the body mold and everything looks good. I like the gauntlets and the, and the purple bicep band going on. You have the little throw around the waist there, which looks really good. It is in plastic, so if you wanted to keep that on, I'm guessing that it will be a little bit more difficult to pose around so that's kind of bothersome however you know I, I'm sure it's removable and you can get all those different things going with it but I like the way the head sculpt looks. I don't have a problem with the head sculpt. It's kind of weird because this head sculpt reminds me a lot of... It's giving me real Eric from WWE vibes, kind of, you know, with his elite figure. It's just what the head sculpt reminds me of there. But I like the likeness, you know. It's it's not perfect by any means, but I do think it has a solid head sculpt on it. He is yelling, so we got Jimmy Uso syndrome going on with it right there. But I think the likeness is there. I think you got, uh, you got a good likeness to Stu Grayson and everything going on with him. You have your face paint going down the middle. He's a pretty ripped up dude, so I think the torso works. I don't have any issues with parts, choices, and stuff like that. But it is cool to see another member of the Dark Order. Again, this whole wave is practically Dark Order. But there is Stu Grayson and Evil Uno from Series 3 of Unmatched. The next figure in the set, guys, is going to be none other than the Queen Slayer, Anna J of the Dark Order. I like this figure. I think that it does capture her likeness pretty good. I feel like the arms are, are pretty beefy. They gave her some muscle right there, which is nice to see. I don't know exactly. I'm still learning. I'm still getting better at looking at specific parts of the AEW figures compared to different ones because AEW and Jazzwares give us a ton of one of one molds so like every figure kind of changes just a little bit from figure to figure which is out outstanding it's an amazing feature of the AEW Jazzwares unrivaled unmatched line and so I'm still learning like the arm molds and I'm still learning to see if I can recognize different parts across different lines of figures but this figure looks to be pretty damn nice I like it you know it's still got the same thing with the women's figures which is kind of unfortunate because the lower part of the torso where the belly button is and you know the lower stomach area area is not in the softer rubber like the men's figures, so they don't get that good ab crunch that you would like to see just like the men. So, I don't know what it is, but if you've ever noticed across every single line, man, you look at Marvel Legends, you look at WWE Mattel, AEW Jazzwares, the women's figures always get different treatment than the men's figures. If you guys have ever noticed, it's like double jointed and single jointed arms. You got like lower different torsos. You got different ab crunches and stuff like that. Like, I get the anatomy of men and women is different, but at the same time, double jointed arms should be, you know, the same across the board. I feel like the lower torso they could edit it in some way and tweak it in some way but I guess because you know the you guys can see where the waistline is underneath the belly button where the waist swivel is is the reason they don't do that is because the the lower the lower torso would have to be weirdly shaped I guess 
I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing out my opinions. These are just my thoughts about it, but I, I would like to see it implemented as much as possible in the future so that the women's figures can articulate just as good as the men's. But I like the molds going on. I like the attire. You know, it matches the rest of the Dark Order with the silver, black, and purple. I like the choker right there. I think the likeness is good. It's a it's a nice looking head sculpt. You know, I, these figures of the women need to capture the likeness of the women because you don't, you don't want a woman that looks good in real life. You don't want the figure to look nothing like the woman in real life. So you got to have your crossover there. But Anna Jay's looking good. I like the figure. I think all the parts are nice. Can't wait to see how it feels in hand and see if it can compete with Take as the best women's AEW figure so far. Next up in our set, guys, is going to be none other than John Silver of the Dark Order. And again, man, just so cool to see a full, like, Dark Order wave, man. I think that's such a unique idea that Jazzwares is bringing to this. I think that'd be cool to see in, in WWE Mattel or just the Unrivaled line in, in general. It would be really cool to see, like, full waves represented of, you know, certain factions or certain characters kind of based around the same idea. Kind of like a SummerSlam wave uh, a little bit, but this is more, even more focused than that, so I think that's really cool. Cool. But John Silver's looking good. Uh, head sculpt is okay. It's kind of like, I, I don't know, like, I feel like a lot of the head sculpts in this entire wave, I feel like the Anna J is really good. I feel like the Stu Grayson specifically and the John Silver, I mean, even the Evil Uno, like what I was talking about with the eyes, I feel like it's just very basic. Like, it doesn't look like there's a lot of detail going on. I'm not really seeing, like, some true effects. It kind of looks like, you know, uh, like the cartoony kind of characters or, like, cartoony looking head sculpts because, you know, like, uh, the, the, oh, Omegas from Unrivaled Series Number 4 and even the Unmatched one and even the Darby Allens and guys like that. I feel like those head sculpts are stronger than these. Let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. I like the formula. It's kind of like the Frankie Kazarian style formula. Hopefully we do have kick pad rotation right here. My boy Magic knows how I feel about the kick pad rotation. I feel like he takes me into consideration when, when designing these figures for the kick pad rotation. So hopefully that will be the case. But John Silver is looking pretty good. Hopefully, uh, you know, uh, maybe the head sculpt can improve. I don't know. I think this one comes with two interchangeable heads, so maybe the other one looks better. I don't know, but John Silver is here in the flesh. Next up is none other than Mr. Brody Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, what a beautiful figure, man. I am loving this. We finally have our hands on an AEW Jazzwares Brody Lee. RIP to the legend because this figure looks incredible, man. The TNT Championship looks great. I love the gray pants that we're getting here. The whole the whole deal, man. It looks slick. It looks clean. I really love the way it looks, man. Just just a beautiful piece. Again, on the head sculpt, though, like, am I, am I, like, I think the likeness is great. I think it looks just like Brody Lee, but am I tripping on, like, it doesn't have, like, that true effects look. It has, like, a cartoony-ish vibe to it. Sort of, like, figures toy company type vibe a little bit. Like, it obviously looks a lot better than that, but that's the kind of vibe I'm getting. I'm not getting a lot of true effects. I'm not getting like digital print technology. Are they getting away from that to prevent from the misprints? Because these head sculpts aren't looking like other head sculpts that we've seen in the past from these other figures. Like, am I insane? Am I insane or am, am I correct? You guys can let me know what you think. But the Brody Lee looks incredible. Really loving the way it looks. I can't wait till we get more angles of this guy. But it looks like it's going to pose well. I can tell already that it's going to feel good in the hand. Like, you can tell like the heft that it's going to have to it. It looks really, really clean. I I can't wait to see what it looks like up next to our Mattel WWE Elites. And it reminds me a lot of the one that I've been using on the PickFed for a really long time. So, man, that, that looks great. I'm really happy with it. So happy to finally have a Brody Lee figure. And I know that everybody's going to want to get their hands on this thing, man. It's going to be a great piece. And I can't wait to pre-order this guy. Cannot wait to pre-order this guy and get all the different things in, man. But this Brody Lee figure looks insane. But it's not just one Brody Lee, man. We also have a look at number two. Mr. Brody Lee of the Dark Order is getting a 1 of 5,000 Chase variant edition. And you guys can see here it is in the all black attire with... His beautiful Dark Order symbolism and stitches in, in the black and purple, man. This is a beautiful looking figure as well. I honestly think I like the regular version better, but this is going to be a beautiful figure. And I don't know why. How sick would it be? I know they're not going to do it, but how sick would it be to see this figure, but with like the purple in the foil, you know, instead of the gold foil or the silver foil or the blue foil, what if they did like purple foil around the figure for the chase variant? I think that would be absolutely beautiful. And I'm guessing, I, I I don't know why, but I feel like in my in my soul, the next ringside exclusive is gonna be some sort of Brody Lee with like purple and nice cool packaging and stuff like that. I hope the accessories for these figures are nice as well. But the Brody Lee chase variant looks sick AF. I don't know when the hell I'll ever get my hands on it, but it does look sick. I like the way it looks, and the Brody Lee looks fantastic, man. I 
I like the way it looks, all the black and the, and the purple and everything. And I also found out that these images had a rush put on them. And so I'm guessing that the reason these head sculpts don't look official or they don't have the true effects or all the details that we want is because these were rushed. Like these images did have like a rush on them and this is not the full completed figures just yet. So hopefully that'll be the case and the head sculpts will look better once they are completed. But these don't look bad. They don't look horrible or bad by any means. I just think that they're lacking a little detail. They're lacking true effects and stuff like that. But I love the Brody Lee, man. We also have a look at the other Chase variant in the set, which is going to be the 1 of 3000 and a J figure. And I like this one a lot as well. The black and purple looks so sick. The sleeves look sick. I like this one better than the other version. I just think it looks a lot cleaner. Kind of reminds me of like a comic book character or something. She kind of looks like, I, I don't even know. She just looks like a comic book character for some reason. I, I don't know what, but I think this figure looks better than the other version. The black and purple looks sick. I love the black sleeves. This is, uh, this may be my favorite women's figure we've seen so far of, of Anna J here in the Unmatched Collection Series number three. And I think the last figure in the set, isn't it supposed to be an LJN Darby Allen? I don't think we have an image of it just yet. I don't know if we're going to get an image today or not. I guess you guys will know in this video, but that is all of the figures. We have the Anna J Chase variant, the Brody Lee Chase variant, the regular Brody Lee, the regular Anna J. You have Stu Grayson, John Silver, and Evil Uno. And the last thing that I want to take a look at, guys, is going to be the pop-up entrance stage by Jazzwares and AEW. As you guys can see here, this is going to be very similar to the thing we got a few years back with the SmackDown and Raw entrance stage, where it was like a pop-up made out of like cardboard and and paper and stuff. And you can interchange the Titan Tron to give yourself the Dynamite Titan Tron. You have all out. You can have dark. You can have double or nothing. Full gear. Revolution. All those different things. And I was told by my boy Matt who did uh, take photographs of this thing. I don't know if these are his photographs specifically, but he did say that this thing has much more sturdy cardboard and much more sturdy, uh, you know, ability. Like, it's it's not going to just fall over. It's not going to be, like, really unpleasant to use. He said that we would have a lot of fun with it. So hopefully that'll be the case. I think it looks sick. I would love to use this thing, cover up the logos, and use it as a vindication or a, a MDT live stage. I think that would be really great. I, I highly doubt that the... I don't think the lights are functional or anything. I think it's just photographs. But hopefully, but hopefully when we get it in hand, we can, you know, fill all the different things. You've got the tubes coming through right there. you got the platform and the stage and everything. I think it looks sick. I, I hope that it's just as good in real life as it looks in images and that the cardboard and, you know, all that will be really quality. That way it doesn't fall over. The figures don't fall over and all that stuff, man. But I think that pretty much wraps up today's news, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'd love to know what you think of AEW Match Collection Series number three. What do you think of Brody Lee? What do you think of the pop-up stage? I think I'm supposed to be getting the AEW Accessories Pack with the barrel and stuff in the mail in the next couple days, and I will be making a review of that. We also have our top 10 AEW figures of the year, WWE figures of the year, the worst figures of the year, all these different things coming soon. So stay tuned, man. Hope you guys are having a blessed holiday, man. But thank you guys for watching. Let me know all your thoughts of this stuff down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Don't cross the line like... Uh, I guess, what, all the head sculpts in this video? I don't know. Forget it. They, they, they didn't quite cross the line. You crossed the line. I've been beaten.